Welcome to another edition of Chicago Crossing Model Railroad at the Bench. Eric here with you. Hope you're having a great weekend. Uh, for me, it's been a fun and productive one as I've started to uh, finalize the build for my uh, scrap charging ladles and trolleys, as you can see here. So this is a, a final product. And I've got uh, two components here that I'm going to uh, show you uh, basically what I did. These little trolleys are uh, semi-prototypical representations of what Finkel Steel used on their little internal railroad in order to shuttle around uh, things like these ladles into the electric arc furnace, where they would then be used to dump scrap into the furnace. And if you were lucky to live in Chicago in the mid 2000s or late uh, to early 2010s prior then you could all watch this happen from the street they would have overhead doors just open and you could just peek in and they didn't care it was totally fine and you could watch them uh, essentially make new steel anyway these little trolleys uh, were used again on kind of an internal railroad standard gauge but really really tight curves they were moved by little uh, motorized carts so to speak uh, here what I've done is I've basically just taken strip styrene and uh, styrene uh, sheets of various uh, descriptions and just cut out pieces to make everything look representative, rep representative. Again, I don't have all angles in terms of photographs, so essentially some of it is you just make it look good from the side. The top is going to be covered by the trolley, or sorry, by the, uh, uh, by the charging ladle. So, you know, you can see on the underside here, these will not roll. I didn't really make them to. Instead, what I did is I took Z-gauge wheels because since this operates on standard track, uh, I just use Z-gauge wheels that gives it a, a much smaller wheel size, more uh, typical for the prototype. And I just glued them onto the sides. And then uh, up here, I just, you know, kind of micro drilled some holes as if these are the uh, axle boxes that you can see on the prototype. And then there was a circular platform for placing the ladle. If you look to uh, the ends of this thing, uh, what you can see as a standard were basically buffers. And these were held together by drawbars. So I've used brass rod as the drawbar material. The buffers are basically, again, just a uh, plastruct uh, round tubing. And then uh, little, you know, guards for where the drawbar actually goes in. And that's pretty much all there is to these things. They're incredibly uh, simple little devices. Uh, on the top, it's basically just a couple of strips of styrene. In order to create the body for this, I actually used the uh, pieces that are, you know, sort of corners. And that allowed me to create both the sides and uh, to frame up the top with another little strip to form the ends. And that's how all of that went together. So it's really amazing what you can make with strips uh, styrene. These are not precise. Uh, obviously, the wheels are probably even smaller on the, the actual trolleys. But nonetheless, for what I need these to do, this is uh, basically perfect. So anyway, these uh, have been pretty, you know, simple builds. I built three of them within uh, an afternoon. Uh, this is a 3D print, uh, I believe. Uh, probably a resin print or something like that, a beautiful prototype of the charging ladles that were actually used over at the Finkel steel mill. And so uh, this has been already painted uh, by hand in a dark umber color. Uh, now uh, we'll be putting on some additional uh, features as you'll see, and we'll be joining the two and then making them into a little train like you see in all of the photos. So uh, let's get right to the, the start. I've already airbrushed these, uh, both an umber and also uh, then a, a gray. The colors I've used are basically a combination of XF69 NATO Black. I use that almost all the time for base coats, mixed with a little bit of whole red. That's particularly useful 
for uh, doing these sorts of uh, things like this where you want especially kind of a dirty, grimy look to it. And then on top of that, very dilute uh, use of XF-19 Sky Gray. From what I can gather in the photos, these uh, cars were painted gray, uh, sort of almost a primer coat or something like that. It's sort of difficult to tell, but that's my approximation of it. And of course, any time you have a dark undercoat, then you just uh, start lightly airbrushing, as you can see, uh, in order to get to where you want uh, that final coat to be. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to put a lot of the finishing paint touches uh, on these uh, little trolleys and also uh, on the charging ladles in order to uh, get them to look like a prototype uh, ladle like you actually would have seen at Finkel Steel. And this is kind of what they uh, end up looking like based on, on a lot of photographs. And again, it really just goes uh, to show that using uh, photographs as your way of being able to identify uh, how something looks prototypic uh, prototypically is uh, a great way to go. It just gives you a sense of what you need to do in order to uh, kind of achieve a nice look for your uh, item. So anyway, there's going to be a little train of these and I'll show you how I did that. At this point, most of the painting that I'm going to be doing is going to be using a wet on wet technique, which means I'm going to take a brush and basically take the model, wet it down with water, and then use that as a blending agent for different colors of paint. And so I'm starting out on the trolley here with uh, kind of that blue-gray color. And what's really nice about that is that'll help to highlight areas where maybe the paint is more uh, thickly applied uh, than otherwise. So in other words, you get almost a mottled sort of effect, as if uh, some of the paint is coming off, some of the paint is there. Exactly the sort of thing that you would expect to see on a worn out piece of equipment. I also do this with the ladle. And the reason is, if you look at the photos of the ladle, what you notice is that has a really mottled appearance. And in order for some of the lighter rust colors to really come through, what you want to do is you want to provide areas of a kind of lighter color. Keep in mind, these ladles are incredibly corroded. If you ever look at what happens uh, in your gas grill burners, you notice that the metal is often stained in a lot of interesting ways due to heat, as well as due to exposure to the outdoor elements. When these ladles open, they're opening above an electric arc furnace that is full of fire. So they're getting cooked and then they're getting put back outdoors. The next step is to use some Tamiya Desert Yellow. And in this case, I've mixed it almost just a few drops into 90% uh, isopropanol. It's a very, very thin coating and that's exactly by design. What I want to do here is I want to build up very, very light coats of yellow as one of the constituents of this sort of corrosion and discoloration that is part of these ladles. Again, if you look at the photos of the prototype, you see that in many cases they almost do look yellow or almost as if that were the base coat. So what I'm doing with my airbrush is I'm building up color very, very gradually. I kind of keep an eye out for the shine of the isopropanol and that helps me tell as I'm building things up. And as you can see here, slowly but surely you start to build up color. And that's what I want, just kind of a gradual fill of yellow coloration in random spots across uh, the model. Following the airbrush step, it's back to a wet-on-wet -wet approach, now with a variety of different colors of rust-related paints, including some that are relatively bright, like that orange. Again, rust is a lot of different colors, and so that means that, especially using a wet-on-wet -wet approach when the model is essentially uh, nicely coated with water, you can get gradations of these colors all throughout. Here you can see a darker color as well. 
and that'll be used to uh, sort of low light certain areas. And lastly, again, going back to a very yellow color. Don't be afraid to use colors that almost seem counterintuitive. Things like yellows or pinks or even whites are common on these uh, prototypes. So you can use almost any color on here and you'd probably find that you get a prototypical effect. So once again, I'm using a broader brush here to wet down the model. And then I'm applying the paint almost randomly. Although I'm focusing in particular over on the lower clamshell doors that normally dump the scrap into the hot, uh, into the hot furnace. And the reason I'm doing that is because that area, much like a, a grill burner, is the area most prone to discoloration. But what you notice is, based on the mode of application, I'm essentially not brushing, I'm more dotting the paint on there. And so what you get is a real random gradation of different colors all throughout the model, and the water helps distribute it across. So what you end up with is a really interesting patterning of rust all throughout. Next up, it's time to do some chipping. As you can see in the prototypes before, there's actually a whole bunch of areas where you have really dark rust. So in this case, I'm using a very, very small piece of sponge and I'm using a, a German black brown color. So it's darker than the rest of the model. I'm getting off most of the paint and then I'm barely touching it. I'm not actually compressing the sponge onto there. Rather, I'm just touching it and whatever residual paint is on there provides the randomness of the chipping. In this case, I think less is more, so I'm being really judicious about how much I put on there because there are additional ways to add uh, little specks and flecks of rust, as you'll see later. But don't forget the trolley, so I'm coming back to that. These things are beaten up. They're dragged through dirty floors and all sorts of stuff. So I guarantee you, whatever paint is left on there, if that actually is paint, is going to be really, really chipped. I focus again on corners and edges, anywhere that would come in contact either with another car or with an object. As I said, I had other ways to introduce little paint chips and uh, flecks all throughout uh, the ladle. So here what I'm using is I'm using a Sakura micro pen. I'm using the brown color and I'm putting in little patterns of scraping onto the model. I'll also come back when this is done and I'll do the same uh, with a black pen as well to provide uh, sort of a look of holes or other indentations into the model. You notice I'm focusing particularly on the upper and lower lips of the ladle. And that's intentional. That's area, those are areas where a lot of chipping and damage would ordinarily occur. And now, just like the prototype, a spray painted number to indicate which ladle it actually is. Last up are pastels. And unfortunately, while my camera failed to record what I did to the ladle, it did record what I did to the trolley. And it's basically the same thing, using bright colors to accentuate the rust in random areas. Last up, it's time to install the wire that opens the clamshell doors. Normally, these ladles are held by two hooks. One holds the main weight of the ladle. The other one uh, carries onto that wire and pulls on it and that opens the bottom doors and allows the scrap to fall into the furnace. So here I'm modeling that to the best of my ability without having been able to see exactly how these worked uh, in the Finkel steel mill. And of course after the wire is installed it's all about painting. This is I think like a 32 gauge wire. It is really really thin and so a little bit of dark rust helps to accentuate the age of that cable. Note that to install this wire, the first thing I did was actually just super glue it to uh, those hinges that open the doors and then wrapped it around uh, the hinges that actually hold the main hook area. 
And that's what you get, the final product. Looks like it's had a lifetime of service over in the steel mill, is profoundly discolored and rusted, and is ready for a few more hoistings above the electric arc furnace at Finkel Steel.